Bill for something. Dreadful Sorry. Dreadful Sorry. That's a good title. Isn't it? Yeah. Dreadful Sorry. Ba, 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 da, do, da, Dreadful do, da. Sorry, but Apology Not Accepted. There you go. We're on the air. Are we? Well, nobody's here. Nobody cares about us. We're really? Nobody's here? We just, we're here and you've got a picture of uh, my, uh, my cat, uh, the first, Posse's the first. Posse and, number one. Uh huh. I don't remember what it My daughter, my uh, sister called her cat. She was the genie there on the, on the right. She was three years older. And there's Lassie, the dog, and then my three brothers and the, the judge and uh, Punky, my adoptive parents. Okay. And Punky was her name? A nickname. Her name was Lucille, but they called her Punky. Why did they call her Punky? A nickname. I have a nickname for Ginger. They called her Punky, right? Well, Ginger really goes with Virginia. Yeah, well, you know, I, uh, uh, Well, my grandfather was Goggy. Where did that come from? It was Elmo. Where did Goggy come from? I don't know. So you're saying I'm, we're not on, on the air now? No, we're on the air now. You're showing that picture. This one? No. Okay, what is, what's on your screen? Oh, that. I'm showing that. Okay. So, are you, are you this, ready to go your so if you want to know the story behind Patches, um, that was the cat, five cats after this group. So there's another story about posies <laughs> and the cat and growing up in Bellevue, Washington. And we just meant to show you guys this picture, so we're showing it to you now. How's that? Yeah, and, and Ginger is the little girl on the left. Yeah. In the front there. Yeah. In case so, you were wondering. All right. Anybody's so, wondering. So I'm all right. I guess I'm going to just start here. What are we painting today? Well, you, you, you know, John, what we're what we're painting is um, uh, kind of this painting is it's not an exact replica, but when my daughter Cinnamon and I in 2001, right, right at, immediately after 9/11, and we'll tell that story today when you know how we got there. We we went to the southern south of France. And um, we rented a, a basically a 27-room hotel, and it was just the two of us. In a 27 room. Yeah, 27 rooms. Well, we we were uh, they were gonna, gonna let us heat two of them, and had the living room and the kitchen and the basement. Uh, and so, uh, even though it was a long, it was a haunted hotel. It's a whole other story, but we'll we'll get into that today. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, the, what I'm painting is there was an artist. American artist that was a pal a pastel artist named Mary, and she oh, she and her husband was an architect, and she bought this old farm not far from where we were, probably about 15 minutes down the road. And um, this is really what I kind of remember of her house that she has as an art studio, and she used to have groups come over and paint. And Cinnamon and I were very jealous of Mary and her fabulous house, old house. So this is Mary's house. This is Mary's house, but we're going to talk about Cinnamon and her stalker. So no, don't quite start off there yet. Let, let a few people show up and get yourself started. Yeah. So we I mean, we just started the show. And we just started the show. So again, we're talking about uh, Southern France, two thousand and one. Um, a time to remember. Time to remember when Cinnamon. Uh, well, it's an interesting story about how I ended up there. I had an art agent, will be another series, <laughs> and her name was Acadriana. And uh, that was a, you know, not a real name, but, you know, she had everybody call her that because everybody from her planet was named Aka something. And she was a walk-in um, to this body, this person named Maury from Florida. And she was a, she was a walk-in. And that means that she sort of inhabited Maury's body, which is a trick in itself, you've got to admit, right? Yes and yes. So um, anyway, so anyway, Acadriana and I, Acadriana sold my paintings for years, um, and I pa painted uh, like crazy for her. And But we, we ran into a lot of arguments and we'll go into another story sometime about that. But anyway, I went, I went to, a, to a psychic fair here in Texas. They have them about once a month, not far outside of Houston. And um, this uh, 
the psychic said that um, I was very unhappy and I either needed to go have an affair or get out of town and go paint. But whatever I did, I should dump, get rid of a Cadriana that she was, uh, and, and that was really good advice. And so um, I told Cinnamon, I said, it seems like we need to, um, I need to get, go to France, but I don't know how I'm going to do that. They said, they, they told, the psychic said we'd find a deal. So then, this was before cell phones and, well, maybe we had cell phones. I don't know. Did we have cell phones? 2001, you should have cell we phones. We had cell phones. But this was before, um, uh, see, let me get some other paint out over here. This was before um, in the Internet was such an easy place to search. But Cinnamon did search the Internet and for um, a place we could rent in France. Not like a hotel because we wanted to stay there for about six weeks to two months. And um, airfare was extremely cheap because it was right after 9-11 and quite frankly nobody wanted to get on an airplane. No surprise there. So they were, they were giving the airfare away, right? You know, yeah, so. True. Uh, anyhow, uh, so Cinnamon got on the, like, a, like, really got very busy looking on the internet. She says, I, f I found, um, I found where we, you can go. Um, there's an American couple. She writes for a food magazine and he's an author and they have a kind of a, uh, a, an old hotel they bought in France and uh, they would they're willing to rent it out on a scholarship basis which wasn't free but there, there was certainly some money involved right uh, but super cheap compared to what it would normally go for off season if you can tell them why you need it well obviously I couldn't go into the thing I have this crazy um, Agent who um, I'm fighting with now. I'm breaking, you know, I'm breaking up with my agent, art agent, and I need somewhere to go. And um, uh, and that, but I did have a, I had a big art show that spring, and I was scheduled to go to New York in the end of February for a big art show, and I had did not have paintings for that. So uh, that's what I needed it for. And then cinnamon, lucky for me, cinnamon was. Um, uh, a professional. She she was in college. She learned photography, and she's a professional photographer. She's really good. She can do a darkroom stuff and all that stuff. So basically, I told Cinnamon. I said I'd really, um, really like to you know to go and do this. Um, would you be interested in um, uh, coming along with me? And. Um, I'll um, I'll pay your way, uh, and um, and we'll just take a vacation. Now, the thing it was is that cinnamon. You know, I uh, cinnamon uh, at the time was uh, I think this was before she and John were married. I'm trying to think, yeah, no, they were married. So I had to break. You know, she had to agree to to leave. You know, John, her husband, and. Um, and then, uh, and I had to agree to uh, cover phone calls to him from France. And I don't remember what I agreed to, but um, uh, the um, upshot of it was is that uh, she came. And she found us this bed and breakfast, and they, uh, we, it wasn't a bed and breakfast, 27 year old, old, old hotels, ancient, like a couple, like a few, several hundred years old. It was really old. Old, can I, did I tell you it was old? I think it's old. Was old, right? So she agreed to anyway. She agreed to to do that, and um, and we and we went. Okay. So uh, I had had a little French from going to boarding school in French Island, Switzerland, and when I say little un petit peu, it was like next to non-existent for all our French fans that are watching. Um, Oh, and John, did I tell you we have somebody watching from Fiji? Really? Yeah, now? yeah, yeah. A, a show from Fiji. Really? Yeah. We went there. Yeah. No, we didn't go to Fiji. We didn't? No, we didn't. We went to a lot of places, Fiji, we didn't make it. We, we were close, though. We were close. We were well, close. you know, within a thousand miles or so, you know, well, Australia. That's close. Okay. 
closer than we are now. How's that? You're right. I mean, it's all relative. Yeah. So anyway, um, so uh, uh, so we so we're over there in um, in France, and, we, and the first thing happens that we had to rent a car, and then uh, it was a thing to to get there, you know, and you know rent our car and all that stuff, right? So we got anybody on here now, John, that, that wants to know what Is we're doing? Is there anybody on? Uh, we have 38. Yeah, we're, we're pretty, pretty much where, we, where we've been. Okay. So anyway, so now, you know, this is 2001. And Cinnamon is, um, uh, this is before she had her honey. So this was like, you know, she didn't, honey is her first daughter, her first child. And so... If you if you think about it from that standpoint, this was a long time ago, and and she's gorgeous now. She was she was breathtakingly gorgeous, um, back that back then. And uh, uh, so we so anyway so we we get the we we start to we we get the rental car which took a little bit, and then we. Um, then we, it's a long ways that where, where this place is is out in the middle of nowhere up in the Black Mountains of France. So we're, we've got a map and we're driving for like, um, oh gosh, uh, three hours or something. We go through the city of Carcassonne and then we're heading up, heading up into the mountains. And um, the, the, road, the road is starting to get narrow. It's like two lanes. And... Um, and, and then gets down to like one lane going up this hill. And I can't remember who has the right of way. Does the people going up the hill have the right of way? The people going down? I still I'm sure I understand that completely because I have so little experience with one, one lane roads. But there was a lot of traffic and blind curves. And um, so by the time we got our rental car and then we, um, we, we drove to... Um, past all these vineyards, and the first it was highway, and then we were driving and driving, and then finally we get um, uh, to, um, to where we're starting to climb the mountain, lots of curves, and then the farther we go, the smaller everything, the road gets smaller and smaller. There's traffic, and uh, you know, and I know we're, we're annoying the locals, because there's traffic, and I can tell, I can see that you know our inability to understand, you know how that these they, these guys work stuff is. Uh, anyway, I'm driving the car, and it's good. And Cinnamon's reading the map, and you know that map, map map reading has never been her best skill, still isn't. But that's why we have GPS. This is before GPS. I know this sounds so funny. All the last twenty years, all the improvements, John, that have happened in the last twenty years. It's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely. We talked about before GPS, and um, so now if you, you do that, you, they've got you get a GPS in the car, no worries, right? You just you just do that, yeah. But back then, there was none of that. So, anyhow, <coughs> we're a little lost. And it keeps going and going, and now I think we're on somebody's friggin' driveway. I said, this cannot be, this cannot be correct, right? Surely we're on somebody's driveway, yeah? And I'm, I'm thinking that's got to be true, because it just gets, the road keeps getting narrower and narrower, and then we pass a village or two, and it's not that, and we're still going. And then we get kind of that, I don't, we're not quite to the top of the hill, but we, we're at another place where we kind of can look up and look down on a, um, a little village there. Just village is kind of too loose a word. When I say village, there was just some homes. There wasn't, there was this hotel and a bunch of houses, but there was not little shops or anything. Just like a little cluster where people might live there. So um, anyway, so we... It's, it's now like 11.30 at night or something, and it's dark. And, you know, I'm, I'm a little concerned. Uh, it's, it's taken us this long. You know, when you plan these trips, you don't, 
you don't really think about the drive to get there, you know? You just don't, okay? So anyway, so we find the, the, the we find a parking space and um, and then we kind of walk down this narrow lane and we're pretty sure we look at the numbers and it's dark and we've got our, you know, we're pretty sure this is this is the house, okay? We're, we're pretty sure that that's, this is it. And um, so we can't figure out how to get in. <laughs> so we'll start with that. So you're at the right address. Yeah, it's the right address. And then, and then, then we, um, I can't remember if they'd mailed us the keys or whatever. We couldn't get the lock to work for a while. But then, then, then common sense prevailed and we, and we got in. Does this make sense? So we're in this, this house, and it's huge. And it's a 27-room, old, old building. Uh, uh, three story and the inside uh, it's cold as blue blazes it's um, just oh my gosh it's cold and um, there's a fireplace big huge giant fireplace like 48 by 60 or something and then there's this kind of funny old kitchen and then, and, and there's one room with the fireplace and, and it's a dining room table and some chairs and stuff. And then there's a kitchen. And then there's a long hall. <coughs> and off to the right, there's a bedroom. And that was the bedroom that Cinnamon took. And that, they told us which bedrooms we could have. And then mine was up some stairs and um, kind of at the top of the stairs. But if you kept going, there was room after room in this place with, um, with nothing, okay? Uh, there was just nothing there at all. I mean, just beds and empty and, you know, mattresses and cupboards and comfort comforters and, you know, like you could have filled this whole place up, okay? But, but, you know, so we had a, we had like a bath, you know, had like a, I had my own bathroom and Cinnamon had a bathroom off of her room. And the only heat in the bedroom was that, that bathroom. It's the only heat you could turn it on and take a shower and turn on the bathroom. And um, <coughs> so, anyway, we're looking around, going in, and it's, it's, you know, I'm not, look, it was old, okay? But we're on an adventure, and I'm all excited. It's kind of quaint and charming, and uh, I figure we can maybe get a fireplace lit, but the, there's wood in the fireplace. There's big logs, but there's no kindling. There's no way to start the fire. Except this, there wasn't a fire laid for us or anything. The the owners are in America right now, and there's no um, there's no way to at all to make this um, uh, to, to to heat anything. And um, gas stove in the kitchen, but but other than that, that was that's pretty much it, right? So um, anyhow. We're kind of looking at that, looking around, and and, and then, um, there's a knock on the door. Okay, now this is a little dead village. It's not <coughs> people live there, but you know, it's 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 really late at night. <coughs> So we opened the door, because we're dumb, and um, there's this old person out there that speaks English, kind of a relief, right? <coughs> I need one of those cough drops, John. Got a boss. And, um, um, and there's this guy, he's like 48, 50 maybe, um, and you know, just sort of average looking guy with uh, 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 you know, just nothing, nothing about him particularly, anything, right? It wasn't like, I don't know, like, Rock Hudson didn't show up at the door or anything like that. He was just some guy, right? And he has with him a, uh, a, a, um, <coughs> a cake. <in> a, <coughs> he's holding a cake, and he wants to welcome us to the neighborhood at midnight. Hi, he said, this is a French tradition. We, I, I baked you a cake, and, um, and I wanted to welcome you to the neighborhood. 
Now, we don't know what's a French tradition and what is in a French tradition. I mean, wh how would we know that, right? Could be a French tradition. <laughs> Just could be, right? So we let him in. I know. I know. Everybody's rolling their eyes. I'm like, God, you guys, I can't believe you let him in. <coughs> so he had made this cake himself, he said, and I could tell that cooking wasn't his first skill because his cake was kind of falling over and floppy and it was it was it was a nice gesture, but it was the saddest looking cake I'd seen, right? Yes. Uh not 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 to the, the cake there. But anyway, he, he'd made it, so um, we invited him in, and we started talking, and he explained that he lived in the neighborhood, that he, he was, um, um, he had been in the French Foreign Legion and had recently retired from that and um, was divorced, and um, he just lived up. He was spending the, uh, he and his wife were, you know, at odds, and he was spent, the family apparently had a lot of relatives in the village, and the family um, just lived, lived around and he was, that's where he lived too. He, you know, it's family kind of thing. And that was his family. So, and that was nice. And then he, we explained the problem with the, with the fireplace. And he said, um, that, that if we, he showed us that there was a, he had to go down these creepy stairs on the back part of the house. And then there was a whole nother set of rooms and living rooms down there in the kitchen. And then kind of off to the left of that and up some, I mean, you never would have found it, it was this kind of open area with the firewood. And, uh, uh, and some kindling. And also he, he proceeded to take an ax and, uh, cut us some wood for the fire, which, you know, which was very helpful because, um, quite frankly, we weren't going to have any heat if he hadn't done that. So, um, you know, he, we told him I was an artist and was coming to France and he knew the he had kind of had met the people that um, that owned the um, the chalet. Okay, he had he had um, they had just bought it and they were renting it out kind of in the summertime, and then kept it closed in the winter. And this was a houses like this are generally not. Let's see, why do I even have that brush? Hang on. Um, the, generally, you know, this would have but should have probably stayed empty all all winter. But again, we had made this arrangement with those people, and um, so that's that's what the deal was there. So this little house is going to take some layers as I'm telling you this. For those of you who are new to joining us, this is not a tutorial. I'm giving no art lessons with this painting. What I'm doing is this is a commission painting for someone who has signed up as a purple member in our art school for... Um, for a year. For a year. And they get an 8 by 10 painting. If they had, I've done some uh, 12 by 16s, those people signed up for uh, three, years. three years. And this is a special that we were, run, we were running through the first. And they're just, it's almost over now, but you know, there's well, still time to sign up left. for that, right? A couple uh, weeks left. A couple weeks left. If somebody wants to give themselves the gift of art lessons, and you know, you not only will you get an original painting, which will never be a tutorial, but um, you get, um, uh, you know, the uh, t you you own, you get a year's uh, subscription if you buy one year. Two of the years are um, are, are complimentary, and two of the months are complimentary, right? And um, well, you explain it, John. I'm not very good at explaining these things. <clears throat> well, you do quite well. Um, basically, when you sign up for a year. You're, you're paying for 10 months, but you get 12 months of lessons. And right now, during our special, as a red or purple member, you're going to get a painting, of, like Ginger was saying, an original that she's painting on these fly-on-the-wall episodes. And depending upon what you're, what's, what you're doing, would depend on what you get. And I've got a little chart here. and I'll Give me a second to copy and paste all that in there, because I kept it. I knew this might Are you doing again. that? I want to just dry this real quick. Okay? Okay, so we'll listen to that.
Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'm putting all the all the details are now in the chat. So For yes. Those of you work watching this later and still in December. You can get the details there or visit our website, paintingwithginger.com. We'll take you there. Yep. So this is, um, so anyway, um, so, this, so again, I, like I say, this is not a tutorial. Um, but, but it is, but I figured as long as I was painting these anyway, we just fighted you along. How's that? That's what we did, right, John? We That's just what we did. We said, what the heck? We would invite you to come along, and then we started this story time thing, and people like that, and I have these, all these strange stories. So we're telling the story today about how Cinnamon got a stalker when we were in France. Well, she got a stalker. She had a stalker. <laughs> I think you'd get a stalker. You just... That sounds like a gift or something. She even got a stalker. I'm like, whoa, that's nice. How did she get one of those? <laughs> did they sell them or what? No, no, she, she, um, she attracted a stalker. Now I mention that because, you know, this was, um, you know, she could have um, a model for Vogue magazine. She had an um, absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous lady, and. Uh, and what had happened was that the, our neighbor, who I've forgotten what his name is, I think I've just blacked him out, right? But um, he had uh, seen us walking up from the car because he was sort of an insomniac, and he saw us, and he saw I got a load of cinnamon, and he wanted to know who was moving in. So he made up this whole story about the cake stuff, which we didn't catch on to for, you know, for like another month, right? We thought I mean, he was just so sweet. He brought us his cake and French tradition. Even at midnight, he was willing to bake us a cake. I mean, you remember that old song, If I Knew You Were Coming, I'd Have Baked a Cake. Remember that, John? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, if I knew you were coming, I'd yeah. bake the cake. Bake the cake. So that's what they did. Well, he, that's what he did. So we, we, um, we didn't doubt his veracity when he said all that stuff. We just... Maybe it's true, right? So um, the thing about it was that with this was so, so, and he got us some firewood, which was darn good. So we woke up the next morning, and he left, and we we had you know we woke up the next and trying to get over jet lag from the time change, and I look out the window, and it's snowing. A little tiny now. I had spent my uh, winters in Seattle, Washington. Um, in the winter, we would go to ski camp. And I lived in Aspen, Colorado for a number of years also. And I can tell you that when it starts to snow, if you're in a strange place, and you've got to remember the road we just came up when we got there to this place, um, the... Um, I, I was worried that we didn't have any groceries. We got there at 11 at lunch the night before. We had nothing to eat, not so much as a cup of tea, right? So we had to go to the grocery store and get something. Yeah? Well, yeah, if you're hungry. We absolutely had to go and get some groceries. So uh, I told Simon, I said, get dressed. we got to go now because we could get snowed in, and we got to get enough food so if we're stuck up here for who knows how long, uh, we're going to be okay, right? So, uh, so we get pile in the, in the rental car, and we head down the mountain. Going downhill was a little easier, not so scary. And not so scary in the daylight, though it was a long time to get to the, the city and to fi actually find the, um, uh, actually find the uh, grocery store. That was a you know trick too. So anyway, we we find the uh, grocery store and then we go to get a shopping cart and they're locked. Tighter than the drum, man. Them little suckers are <laughs> locked. 
and we don't have any money yet. We just have credit cards. We have no money, okay? So we're trying to figure out how you get a shopping cart when you, when you have no money. And um, uh, I think we had some American money, but we hadn't changed any money yet. And if we did, and we might have had some bigger bills. I think we may have changed some bigger bills, but we actually had none of the other kind of money. So anyway, Sim and I um, sat in the parking lot, stupidly watching everybody go in and out with their car carts, and then, then they, they put them back, and then they're all happily locked up. That's something that OSHEMS does. Uh, that's a European thing. We, apparently, when they, there was a French grocery store that came to Houston one time, and they did the same thing. They um, just locked up the carts. And um, so... Um, you know, that's not unheard of in the United States. It just was not something we had ever experienced. So I'm thinking, well, maybe we can offer like, somebody $10 to give us a card or something. Right? <laughs> just get a card. So anyway, we somehow, somebody took pity of us. We tried to talk, and my French wasn't good. At, I didn't have enough conversational French to say, hey, I see you have a card. Could I, could I have yours or whatever, right? But so somehow we got a card. For the 20, you needed like a, I don't know, 15, 20 cents or something like that to get it. Was, the carts weren't expensive. And um, so we got this cart, and uh, let's see what else. I'm getting paints out, so I tell you. We go in the grocery store, and we manage to get groceries and get back up the mountain. And, you know, in a pretty lickety split time, we did pretty well with that. And, uh, and we, and, and, and that was fine. And then it stopped snowing, and it turned out that even though it, it snowed, the snow was never going to uh, just pile up like it would be in like, at a ski resort, like I was accustomed to. So we probably didn't have the big emergency I thought we did, but we did have an emergency. In the meantime, our, um, our neighbor's back with, um, hi, how you guys doing? How's everything going? Kind of thing, right? He's back uh, chatting cinnamon up. And then, of course... Uh, uh, we're setting up the, you know, my, all our paints and getting ready, and we've got, we're all ready to paint, cinnamon's ready, we have our easels, and we're set, and we're working. But we decide what we needed to do is drive around and see the countryside, yeah? We need to see where we lived. So, um, uh, anyway, the, the, um, our stalker guy, you know, cinnamon stalker guy. He offered. I have to have. I have to stop and get my paints out. I can't continue on without thalo green. Can you help locate it? Yeah, I do. I just. I can't find it. And I, everything's kind of melted together here with this one. So, um, I know there's a big tube around it somewhere. It might even be in the things. Yeah, I'll, I'll find it. Uh, John will find it because I again. I cannot make. I cannot make any progress without the thalo green. There, there. So, and you know we're we're settled in, and uh, except for it's very cold. We, 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 we there was no fireplace screen, and um, we technically weren't supposed to leave the house with the fire running, but we did. No, we never do that. I know, but we did because otherwise we, well, we did. You know, so of limitations. you know, we, we did, yeah. Statue of limitations, ginger story time, statue of limitations. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we we did, we left the but, um, so I'm uh, we, we're taking our car, um, and we're going to drive around and see some stuff, and our, our kindly neighbor with the cake. Our, our uh, soldier guy, he says, um, if you like, I will show you around. Because he understood I was an artist. Can you use that one? Yeah. If it's open. Yes. <coughs> he was very supportive about that. So, um, and he, he gets in the car and he's wearing driving gloves. I swear to God, he's wearing driving gloves. Not that that's a bad thing. It was just weird you know come on a little weird yes maybe and uh uh anyway the, so the upshot of it is that he's wearing his driving gloves and um 
and we dry, and he he did for three days. He took us all over the area and showed us all the back roads, and I mean we never would have found it without him. I mean, this was really quite marvelous to have that happen. Quite honestly, it was really lovely that he did that, and 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 then he was uh, get making sure we had a fire, and um, you know from our stand, standpoint, it was fine, right? We, you know, he was doing all the things that needed to be done and that we needed, and he was very kind. And then he started to introduce us to the neighbors, his cousins and everybody. So this village, this, where we were, um, and the, was a tight-knit community, really a tight, lovely tight-knit community of um, um, French people. And the, the, we, there was a uh, Claude and Lily lived right up, um, the, right up the street from us, and they had a big. They had a house that had been there that the family had owned since Napoleon. Okay, Tr truly, truly. And um, and then there was another guy named Mark Mouse, and he was a real estate um, agent. And uh, he was excited that some Americans had moved in, because I think at some on some level he was kind of hoping that maybe he could talk us into buying. This was back in two thousand and one where prices were pretty cheap in Europe to buy anything, really were. And he was talking about, um, you know, the possibility of maybe us, you know, buying up maybe a house and coming and also doing art retreats because he had sold Mary her house, the pastel artist I told you about. Yeah, he had, he, he had actually sold her her, her house and um, and he said he would try to show it to us. This is the house that we're painting, Mary's house, okay? It's it just uh, her, her beautiful old chateau that her husband, the architect, uh, fixed up for her, okay? And, and Mary would come in the, in the summertime and bring uh, people from the United States to do pastels and stay in her fabulous house, okay? So um, anyway, so that was nice. So we ended up really making friends with the locals I guess I, that was the way I would say it. It's friends with the locals, and we were invited to our first party, uh, and they brought all, everybody wanted to meet us. And Oh, Mark Mouse was the mayor, too. And um, he, Mark Mouse was the, the mayor, the real estate guy. He was also the mayor, mayor of this, uh, this little village, and he was the, their mayor. And he was very excited that I was, you know, painting the area. I did a lot of paintings of the area and stuff like that. And so, we, anyway, we got invited to their house. First time we got invited to meet the locals and, and got invited to dinner. So that would be the stalker guy and uh, Mark Mouse and some other people. And um, so the one thing that we had noticed, uh, and not as a criticism, but just as an observation of how other people... Um, live, right? There was um, a lot of drinking was involved in all social activities. And everybody did their own wine and stuff and, you know, tell more about that later. But so we went back to the grocery store and they had like, you know how like we have rows of candy and cereal? They had like rows of wine. Everything from, you know, like rows and rows of five and ten dollar wine. And then, um, then there was um, better wine. And then finally, if you looked up on the top shelf, they had something that was made twenty twenty five dollars okay and I mean and having learned my if you ever haven't heard my wine story um, um, for the uh, you know and how my ex-husband um, uh, saved submarines from being uh, torpedoed uh, with a design because I read in the book of French, French uh, Hunt for Red October. Uh, if you haven't heard that story, um, uh, just, to, just, 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 just take my word for it when I tell you that um, the um, I know better, and for my parents, I know better to not show up with crappy stuff when somebody invites you to the dinner. And twenty dollars in the United States isn't very much for wine. Come on, you know you know it isn't. You know twenty dollars gets you an average bottle of something, right? So I didn't feel like we were being overly extravagant, right? I really didn't. I thought we were being um, 
kind of cool, actually. Right? So, uh, so we show up at this party, and we just had to walk across the street. That's all, you know? Everything's in the same... I mean, we all live in the same block, right? So I should show up at this party, and, you know, hi, how are you, and all that good stuff, right? And cheery, cheery. And then... <laughs> Well, come on, you know what I'm saying, right? And then I proceed to present them with this bottle of wine, and they looked at it very surprised, just kind of did a double take on the wine I brought, and they said, oh, isn't this nice? We'll save it for Christmas. Okay? <laughs> Whatever I brought was so not out over the top. But, you know, I, you have to understand I know nothing about wine, and I, I, I was just going by the pretty labels and the price. That was, you know, and, and how else would you buy it, really? So, uh, anyhow, so that was sort of funny. So they, um, I got to dry this, you guys, to do my layers. But it's coming, I see, you can see, kind of see her house coming in there, right? So we're really enjoying our experience in France. Um, the fire, the the fire issue is is almost resolved in the sense that um, um, that our nice uh, man across the street, our soldier guy, he's um, he's supplying us with um, uh, with firewood, and some funny things start to happen. Um, in the house, um, Cinnamon started to convince, is kind of convinced that the house is haunted because things disappear. We're doing laundry and, uh, you know, one of our, some of our underwear disappeared, like one pair of underwear, you know. And um, uh, things are, things are, we're, we're out and things are moved around. Now, I know you're going, you guys, you've got to be kidding. Surely you all are not that dumb. <laughs> Just, but guess what? We were. And, and so, um, and then, again, it was a really old, creepy house, okay? I mean, it was everything I wanted. You know, if you had to go up to your room at night and um, just walking down the hallway was creepy, creepy, yeah? Uh, so anyway, uh, then uh, even though we started, we we were able to start, you know, doing the car and doing the stuff on our own, well, and we definitely did. We um, uh, we were able to, um, you know, kind of get our own, um, tran you know, we got the rental car and we, you know, we, we were bopping around and going places and finding things and you know, using our map, and again, I think I mentioned this was before GPS. Um, we're just, in, um, we're, we're, we're doing okay. And again, we're, we're meeting the neighbors, which, um, which is nice. Who doesn't want to meet the neighbors? And, uh, we're, and we're really having a great time. Um, in spite of the fact that the could have been better with the firewood issue and it was the house was cold and some other stuff and uh, we're, and we're we're driving all around having having a lovely time. Well, then our neighbor, the um, soldier, decides to um, declare his undying love for cinnamon <laughs> in a letter. Uh, no, seriously. Now you have to understand that Cinnamon went out. She she never made it, she made it perfectly clear from day one that she was married. She went out every day at the, to this telephone booth down the because um, we didn't have a cell phone, you know, to this phone booth in in our on our street, 
and called her husband at like at midnight or you know whatever the time difference was. She would call him, okay. And um, so, and and that was the cost of getting her to come with me was being willing to you know pay for for her to be able to call her husband. And I said, well, what are you going to have to tell him when you get home if you tell him everything every day, right? Then when you get home, you'll have nothing to say. But no, no, she just, no, you don't get it, mother, apparently. You know, no, well, no. And now I understand it. John, I would call every day. But, you know, I, that time I didn't have a single person in my life, particularly my husband, George, that I would have, you know, wasted a phone call on, right, when I would see him when I got home in a couple months and tell him how it went. Okay, I know this is, sounds terrible, but probably why we're not married today. Is it doesn't... Um, um, exact uh, confidence, right? So Cinnamon's calling him. So then she gets this this letter and we take it over to um, uh, there was a family. We, we take it over to Mark Mouse, you know, say, look, this guy um, sent Cinnamon this letter. And he was horrified because we again we'd made it very clear Cinnamon was married. There was n there was n none of this, um, absolutely no reason that we could think of why he would have written this letter. And also he was still married himself. He was divorced, and um, so uh, he promised that he wouldn't do it again. And he was all very sorry. And there's big apologies and big drama and all that stuff. And then. Um, this, this other neighbor, Claude Nolian, who, whose house they got been, been in their family since Napoleon, um, offered to um, take us uh, on a tour of France uh, to the Black in, uh, and uh, down the coast to Spain, and um, so you know we went with and very nice. We we Cinnamon and I. Um, uh, you know, I agreed to you know pay the gas, and we wrote, we we went in their car and everything, and we had a marvelous time for a week. And that's, that those guys were retired, and and didn't mind, and it was lovely. In the meantime, our stalkers going in the house. We didn't realize he had it. He was going in the back door, and he's swiping stuff from cinnamon, and um, and then uh. He went out and he bought her uh, a diamond necklace. Oh my! Yeah. And it hadn't been on a date yet, huh? Well, no. And um, he bought her this diamond necklace, and um, I'm just trying to get the right colors here. And again, another letter, and declared his undying love for her. Just never met anybody like her and thought she was wonderful. Has and this even, was so Has he even talked? Well, he'd been over, yeah. He had, remember, I mean, he drove us around for three days. Yeah, but and after three days, you don't He, really he would come by all the time and visit and bring coffee and cake and stuff. He, was, he hung out with us a lot. Okay. He was hanging out with us a lot. So and, he did have some knowledge of cinnamon. Oh yeah, he oh. was hang, like I say, he was hanging out with us a lot, and um, yeah, he, yeah. That's that was what was so weird, John, is that he was hanging out with us, and um, um. Then we were all kind behavior. of friends, and, and we, were, we considered him a friend, right? And there was, again, no doubt in, in my mind that he knew that uh, Cinnamon was, was married um, because, she, you know, uh, that's who she talked about. She didn't have any kids, and that's who she talked about, and, you know. And, um, so this was a very interesting set of circumstances that was going on here. Because, um, uh, again, because Cinnamon uh, 
was married, and um, and we we weren't thinking anything about it. We had no idea he was you know rummaging through her stuff and stealing her underwear, which is just creepy in itself, isn't it? A little bit. And um, uh, so then then the um, then the neighbors got involved. See, by this time, everybody kind of liked us and liked me and loved my paintings. Uh, one sort of a side note on that that was sort of funny. Um, we would, a uh, gentleman took all the photographs, and then we had a printer, and that we we did, and then we'd, uh, we'd print out the pictures. I'd print out the, the reference photos, and um, very happily... Um, did, did some really, some of my best work of paintings. And in fact, if you've ever seen some of my puzzles, that they got published onto puzzles and stuff and won all kinds of awards with the artwork that I did there. And uh, so, I mean, the artwork was, was a huge success and it was a great trip. And just this side thing was Cinnamon and her stalker. So, and we, we, you think back about stuff like that and you think, well, I'm not that naive, but, you know, we were. It just... I know it's weird. So anyway, the the um, it, it all kind of came to a head when he um, he showed up with the um, with the diamond necklace, and you know he wasn't paying, he wasn't getting his child support paid, and his cousins or whoever these people were, the mayor of the village, Mark, was so angry at him because he felt like. They had given the French a bad reputation that that's not how French people behaved. And the Americans would think that they were all just heathens, you know, because of this, right? Um, and we, you know, and like that. So, um, I'm having fun. I'm sitting here thinking, concentrating on my little house and talking to you and, um, so they, they, they basically kicked him out of the village. They told him to go back to his wife, that he couldn't stay there anymore because he was staying there, you know, kind of as a courtesy because of his divorce and stuff. And they said, you have, um, um, you know, kind of disgraced us and you can't be there anymore. And, you know, you don't know about people because I'm quite relieved that, you know, nothing else happened because it turned out... He was going in the house, and he was t things that we kind of maybe misunderstood, mistook for haunted house, or cinema still says it still was haunted, but what we might have mistook, mistook for that. Um, was was him, and that's never a good sign, right? Was him. Never. So, anyhow, we made some great friends. We had that lovely trip to Spain with our friends. And um, one of the things that we learned on that trip that, we, you know, we drove with uh, Claude and Lillian to Spain. And uh, they had us over for dinner, and um, a bunch of times we met their kids. They had kids Cinnamon's age. And, um, like I say, I really... I really like them a lot, and when when Claude was a um, a very ambitious driver, he he didn't think the speed limit ever applied to him at all, and if you were riding anywhere with him, we we met them on a couple of trips. We went back. But if you if he said, listen, let me drive, I'll take you. Um, when we went this that that second um, uh, that sec that summer, we went back and rented a house further up the hill, and uh, for the summer on two acres. And my friend Kathy Schuster went with us. And the first time that and I introduced her to Claude and Lillian, and said, you know, and they're just lovely people, and you're gonna love them, and blah de blah, right? And so Claude offered to. Um, to take us um, to see, I think, 
Oh, he, they took us around, and up, and I'm, I'm going on an adventure with Claude was great, and, and I loved it when he took us to, to, to Spain. But the speed limit never applied to him. Does that make sense? It was a suggestion. It was a, a not, even, not even close to a suggestion. <laughs> and his wife was so funny because whenever we got lost, it was never, ever his fault. She never, you know how sometimes people get in fights in the car, and you should have read the map, and you should have read the map, and again, before GPS. Somebody ought to get the Nobel Peace Prize, by the way, for GPS, because I think they'd stopped a lot more private wars than anything recently. Don't you, John? Yes. I mean, Colby and I, Cinnamon's dad, oh my God, when we went places, um, he couldn't turn his neck from a hand, from a trampoline accident. So... Um, he um, always had me looking on the right. Who's coming? Who's coming? And then I was supposed to say, uh, no, 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 clear, clear, clear kind of thing, right? If you ever see me do that, it's just an odd habit with him, right? Because he couldn't turn his neck. But when I was reading the map for him, um, um, we had a lot of arguments over where we were going. And... Um, uh, and I'd, he'd say, what does that sign say down there? And I'm going, what sign? I don't even see the sign. I had 20-20 vision. What, 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 he had the kind of vision that riflemen have in the military, right? He had that kind of vision. What does that sign say? Oh, I don't know. I give up. What does the sign say, you know? Um, I couldn't even see the sign. That was his sort of weird thing. So um, anyway, oh, so we're going. So Lillian always would say, that's the Spanish. It's their fault. They should have better signs. They, the, you know, she was always mad at whoever made the signs, but never at her husband. Even if we took wrong turns or wherever we were going, it didn't matter. She, um, she always felt it was their fault, uh, never his. And I think it was, it was a very, she was a very loyally wife person, and you could learn a lot from you know people that that manage their lives like that because uh, you're already lost. There's no point in assigning blame and just having an argument, right? How does that help you? It doesn't, yes? So, um, anyway. Uh, I got to dry. One of the things that was um, probably the only time Cinema and I ever got, probably one of the biggest fights we ever had was we were on that trip. I may have told this before, but we had to go down these windy, curvy stairs to the laundry room where the washer and dryer were, okay? And uh, we, are, we used to have big arguments about how, who had to go. Because it was so creepy, it was so scary down there. So we got into an argument about who had to go down to the laundry room to take the stuff out of the dryer, clothes dryer, whatever it was, we put transfer stuff in or whatever that was. And um, uh, Cinnamon uh, and I were just screaming at each other. And uh, everything, you know, it was so weird because we were having such a nice trip and we totally lost it. And then we realized that the reason we were so mad was that neither one of us wanted to go down there. So then we agreed in the future that rather than have this kind of an argument, we would just go down together, right? So that was the thing. That would make more sense to walk. Yeah, so we, we went to uh, Barcelona and we went to... Um, uh, oh God, we had the best. We had the best trip, and um, uh, we saw the Gaudi, uh, you, you know, museum, and um, uh, just everything about this. Um, that trip 
was absolutely spectacular, okay? Really was. It just it was, it was an amazing, amazing trip. This is an interesting painting in that because I'm doing it small, there's a lot of stuff in it. You'd think it would go quicker, but it's probably taking me a little longer because it is small. But that's all right. We don't mind. So Mary's house would look very much like this, and she lived on a, on a, she had, there was a stream, there was a pasture, it was sort of a long, skinny lot, and you went down in there, and, um, and she had all this meadow, and then there was this beautiful little river that ran by her house. I mean, it was really nice. I got to say, it was uh, absolutely lovely. And um, just... And if I, the thing of it is, is that, you know, if, at the time, you know, we talked about, you know, could you, you know, you know, as an artist, could you, you know, could you make it pay for itself to, you know, buy some property like that back when it was pretty affordable? And would that, would that even be not just cost effective, but practical? Right? Because some of that discussion was, huh? <clears throat> was it feasible? It was. I, I'm. I'm kind of. Some ways, you know. Um, like for instance, during COVID, you would have you, the property would have sat empty. You know, when you own property, um, and you. I've watched friends that have had you know rental properties in places like Hawaii and stuff, and it doesn't matter if uh, you're there or not. If you've got a you know problem, you've got to solve it. Yes. And um, somebody has to go over there, so you got you have to have pretty good property management. Mark Mouse thought that he would be perfect for that, and he might have been, right? I don't know, but um, at the time, um, we, we we know we we kind of gave it a pass. I think Cinnamon to this day we always talk about Mary's house and the house of Mary and and her marvelous place. As we like to, to th it was it was pretty neat. Okay, really was. But we made some good friends, and we went back that summer, and uh, like I say, got a good deal on a very nice from the one of the other guys in the village. He had a what they call a Guite de France. And Guites are um, special rental properties you can, you can uh, secure. And the reason they're so wonderful is because the French government guarantees the house. In other words, for a person to get their house in a Guite program, they have to, um, see, I'm going to just put some titanium white out all by itself. They, they, they have to, um, you know, guarantee that, that there's certain standards, that the oven works, that the toilet's flush, that the shower works, there's hot water, there's and sheets, and you, there, you're so many linens, and washer and dryer. They have, they have these certain standards, and the house has to pass that. And it's apparently, according to our friend, very difficult to, um, to, to pass the inspection on something like that. Really, really tough. Um, you wouldn't th you wouldn't think that, but apparently, it is. And um, let's see, where we're going with this. So anyway, we got this, and, and we and he we rented it to, he rented it to us in off season, so we didn't have to pay full price. So we went back later that summer for two full months, and drove all over. Um, Really, really, just drove all over. It was marvel. It was really great. So, and we went with my friend Kathy Schuster 
Cinnamon went too, and um, this time um, the, she she was willing to go if um, we brought um, her husband for out for a week because he was still working. I think at Compact Computers at the time, but he came for a week, and again she had to call him every day. That was still that, that was, she still had to call him. That's kind of the rules of yeah, I'll come and be your photographer. Because basically, I hired her to be my photographer, and uh, and take the pictures. Um, the fact that I paid for college should account for something, but I'm just kidding. Anyway, I was happy to do it because a cinnamon is a great photographer. And the thing about having an artist be your photographer, okay, is that um, you don't have. I can say, I don't, like John. I can say. I need some pictures of that over there, okay? And I don't have to explain what kind of pictures he knows, right? Right? And Cinnamon knows. And back then, if it, you needed to climb up something, and um, she was young enough to be able to climb up and, um, you know, up on a cliff or we, and that kind of stuff. And, and um, so what beautiful things to end. My art show in in, uh, in New York had gone so well, it really had been extremely successful. And um, so uh, we were very fortunate, I would say, to, um, to have that opportunity to do that because it really was. And now John and I just went back to Europe, um, you know, this summer. And we didn't go to France or anything, but um, when you're going, there just wasn't the tourists. I think because of 9-11, we saw a different Europe than, um, than other people because it, the tourists weren't out yet. Does it make sense, John? So everything wasn't crowded and... Um, I gotta dry my yeah, water so I can keep it. What's that? It's getting too touristy now. Oh yeah, it's just way too many people. that we ended up traveling with our friends uh, Claude and Lillian the reason we ended up going on a trip with them was because um, uh, when we, we, we I wanted some paintings of the ocean I wanted to get I wanted some really good shots of the ocean and um, you know there's a painting in the hallway I did John you can see it um, the one with the boats why don't we show that that big, huge one? Yeah, we can show it. Well, I can't adjust anything up there. Oh, okay. Well, we'll take a picture of it and show you next time. Okay. Um, yeah, there was um, yeah, some, you know, some of the best stuff I've done. I had a lot of licensing stuff and puzzles and all kinds of stuff. So that was a very successful trip, and it was good for cinnamon, too. She got some artwork done, and uh, the second trip, which we'll talk about another time, she she got a you know bought a bicycle and she bicycled all over, and um, just loved the heck out of that. This is interesting. Trying to get all these greens. Some light yellow in that. But anyway, we 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 had driven. Um, we had, you know, had a map, and we were going to go down to the coast. 
because I wanted some pictures of the ocean. We were about three hours away, I guess, going the other way from the airport. And um, we drove around. We saw a bunch of sort of swampland and marsh. Couldn't I know this sounds pathetic? Could not find the um, could not find the ocean at all. And um, shocking, I know, really. No um, comment from me. Couldn't find the ocean, and Claude, we'd, we'd gone back, and Claude and Lillian, they were fun because they had pretty, pretty good English. And um, how was your day? Well, you know, um, could have been better. <laughs> Just guess you have an ocean. Where is that ocean anyway? This is what we did. And they, they said, listen, we need a trip anyway. And they had a Dodge, a Plymouth van, you know, which is very expensive American car. You didn't see a lot of those over there. And they had one of those, and they offered very kindly. Now I'm going to start turning stuff upside down, please. Um, to um, take us, and well, honestly, we stayed in kind of weird, kind of funky hotels. But one of the things Claude did, and I started to tell you this, and then I, you know, I'm trying to remember what I'm painting here while I tell you these things. Um, one of the things that Claude. Claude did was whenever we got into a city, we would go to city center, which is in France. There's a lot of cities, you know, kind of city center. And um, he would uh, park the car in a parking garage, and then we'd take taxis. So we, um, a lot of taxi uh, driving, uh, which was a good thing for us. And because um, that that and they really showed us the sights um, more so. I mean, well, it was a guided tour, wasn't it? So that was nice. That was really nice. And uh, they had us out for. They had a big party at their house, and we got to meet their kids. And oh, wow, one thing I remember this was was sort of interesting is that we had gone to their house for dinner, and they, their kids were lived in the city, so that's why they never, never saw them. But they, they had got them to come out for this, which they wanted them to meet us. Like I say, like Cinnamon was like their, their kid's age. And um, the um, she got out this tablecloth that was over 200 years old. It was all hand crocheted. and. You know what do they call that? With just it's cut work, but you know not really crochet. I guess it's not really crochet, but but it's old. Oh my gosh, it's it's old. Yes, and um, and she puts that down on the table, and everybody's you know having some wine and stuff. I'm going. She's telling me about the history of it, and I'm going. How old is this? <laughs> How old did she say this was? <laughs> no way. And she goes. I can't believe you're using it. She says, what are you talking about? She had a couple of them. And I said, well, in the States, I tell you what, this would not be on the wall. This would be um, in a museum or, you know, this wouldn't be on a table. It would be on the wall and framed or something. It wouldn't, wouldn't be in a... Would, we wouldn't use it. She said, why not? And I said, well, it's pretty obvious, right, that the um, you, you, you're painting on food and wine. You've got kids and stuff. There were some grandchildren eating there, too. And um, you'd never get the stains out. And she looked at me like I was just pathetic. What, what do you mean? Well, I said, how, how are you washing it and having it not all stained and everything, right? And she's so funny. She looked at me like, oh, poor you, right? So that was a that was an eye opener too. Um, this idea that their their washing machines go up to boiling. You know, in the olden days when people used to um, to wash, they would they could they would boil the the you know they could they would boil the clothes to clean them, and in high end uh, you know not high end but you know commercial laundromats, there's a little of that too, yeah. And um, 
No, they, um, the, the laundry is just not the issue. I think when we went, I was sort of under the impression that the United States had all the good stuff and everybody else had stuff, but not the good stuff. And, and please don't be offended from those, but that was sort of the, you know, that's sort of the, the press, right? That we've got the good irons, that they had the, they had the good, um, they had the good irons, and they had the, um, um, you know, the, the, the good steam iron, better steam iron. They had better stuff than, it didn't come to, the, what they were using on a daily basis did not come to the United States for many years after that. It just didn't. Uh, and that in itself was interesting. Um, so anyway, with the cinnamon, I think we both agreed that that time in France was quite magical. And we really, in spite of her stalker, we really had a good time. And it was probably one of the better, probably the psychic was really right. That broke the mold with Akadriana, the lady that had everybody that lived on her plant. Planet was Aka something. Okay, that broke the mold with that. And I got to see a part of the world that, you know, just the way people lived, and because because of the friends we made, we were able to do that. We were able to see, you know, um, stuff that normally we wouldn't get a chance to see when you. When you, when you make friends and you actually stay in a place long enough, and it's not like John and I, when we're traveling, um, we're, we're off to the next stop. We're, we're, yeah, we're off to the next thing. We say, we say hi and, you know, here's our card kind of thing. But we're off to the next, next thing, right? And that's that's what you don't. That's what you didn't get with uh, um, That's what you didn't get with, uh, you know, when you're just cruising. You just don't get that that experience. So it kind of immersive when you get when you're able to immerse yourself in a trip. That is the best, isn't it? Yes. If you can just do that. Let's see. <clears throat> I wonder if I can get anything out of this tube of paint. I, the, um, could you get any tube of, out, any paint out of this for me? I, do you have a new Southern Ocean Blue? This is just done. I want a Southern Ocean Blue. I guess I could just slice it open and, and use that, but. Let's not do that, my queen, when I have thousands of them. Okay. Literally. Thousands, but we have to open it. This is upside down because I'm looking for patterns. I'm no longer painting houses in Mary's house. I'm painting patterns, and um, so I don't have to know what anything is. I just have to know it's a pattern. I'm just putting bits of color where I know it needs to go, and. Good man. 
This is Matisse Southern Ocean Blue. Oh, it's all separated. Look at that, John. Look at that. It's all the, we can, I can, I know, we got to mix it together. It's, um, the polymer separated from the pigment. The polymer separated, it's so old. We had that happen to some whole wine. Well, uh, yeah, that happened to me with some whole wine white. Uh, I just, I just wonder just if paint has to go a long ways, if it, you know, has to come across the ocean or. If there's anything to that, I don't know, but um, I, my my paint of choice is golden and Holbein. I like, but um, I don't. For instance, I've had a couple of their um, um, white colors uh, separate, and. Um, Blue, red, yellow, and blue are primary, so you can mix a lot of blues, but every once in a while, if you need a really bright blue, you can kind of make something like this, um, but not really, okay? You can kind of do something, but not, not really. Um, Okay, so I know you have no idea now what I'm painting. You're just all going on, just taking my word for there's something here, right? One thing about the, that I noticed in France is there are a lot of kind of French blue shutters on their houses. So blue is a color that's, that's, uh, that's used often, which is interesting. All right, I'm going to flip this over, see how I did. Oh, okay. Now we're going to dry it and then finish it up. Again, if people are joining us late, John, perhaps um, you'd like to explain what this is about, I suppose, because, like I say, we're not really doing, we're, it's not really a tutorial. So what are we doing, John? We are painting what we consider commissions for people that signed up for a year or two or three in the red or purple memberships. We do during the month of November and December, we're offering a 6x8, 8x10, 9x12, or 12x16, depending upon the level, membership, color, and the number of years. Further up in the chat, for those that are watching it later, if you have your live chat playback, you can scroll back up and you'll be able to see it all listed there, all the different categories. Also, if you visit paintingwithginger.com. You can find it there, provided it's not after, after January, or after December, I guess. This offer ends December 31st at 11.59 p.m. Central Time. It does. That's what it is. Probably never be repeated again. No. That's all right. Yep.
Oh uh, yeah, I'm just, I've kind of ruined this palette now. We'll have to get rid of it because it's got that polymer all over it. Yeah, kind of loop goofing good. everywhere, right? So that's it. I would imagine. So. Let that dry. Probably the wrong brush for that. There we go. But you know this, the thing about, if you have a, if you have a rental place like that, then you, like I say, you've got to take care of it and have to hire it. But you know, uh, it's nice to, I, I would highly recommend the GEET system from in France. Uh, because you can you can get some beautiful properties. And um, oh well, the other thing is the French government uh, holds the money. When you pay your rent for the property in your deposit, the um, French government does not um, uh, does not give the landlord the money uh, for at first. Your um, you have to um, uh, you know your your you have as a as a renter you have to say that it was okay. Okay. And and you can't just. Uh, uh, rent the rent the property. Does that make sense, John? Yeah. That you got it. You got to say that it was um, that 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 the landlord doesn't get paid. But on the other hand, um, a lot of times tourists will come and they'll rent from somebody, and they don't pay. Right? They're not paying. And so what this does for the landlord, and the reason it's a good deal, is that guarantees him a certain amount of money. There's no haggling. This is what this property is. The price is set by the, think of the French government. This is what this property costs, and that's it. And there, there, there's no arguments about it. There's no discussion. So if you're, you can't, you know, the landlord doesn't get stiffed and you as a tourist does, don't get stiffed. And that's a pretty tall order to be able to pull off, don't you think, John? Yes. And not, not, um, Not really done, but I'm getting there. One thing that was a little different when we went, because I was renting a car, I did, you know, I, we did no drinking. No, you know, Cinnamon might have had a glass of wine, but the driver, you know, wasn't drinking, even though everybody else around you might have been, right? Because I didn't want to be responsible for that rental car if something happened to it. So we we're very aware of the fact that we weren't weren't, weren't uh, doing that. Uh, 
Okay, still working on this. I know that sounds crazy. It sort of takes a while to build this up, right? A lot of layers. I know. Just so many. Okay. And it, because acrylics dry darker, colors that I started out with, I'm not happy with anymore. Make sense? No. That, that, you know, like, for instance, my sky is darker than I want it right here. So. Certain blues look really good with orange. Why would that be, my queen? Well, they just look, some blues just look better than others with orange. And um, uh, so, this is where all the layers come in. Is that that okay? That's a happy accident. Let's see, what do we got going here? But we have not really kept much in touch. We never kept, we did not keep in touch with Claude and Lillian after we got back to the States, and I'm sorry I didn't, but we did, I didn't, because they were just great people. Um, uh, the, the, um, the owners of the, the, um, the, 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 the chateau we rented, right? Those guys, they, um, Um, I did a, uh, their house, the, their, I did a painting that ended up on a puzzle that was sold all over the world, their house and their building, and one of their friends saw it and bought it, you know, bought it from me, uh, you know, the, um, uh, bought, bought, bought that, and bought the, I think they bought the painting, yeah, bought the painting because they thought it was great. And I think, I believe I sent them a puzzle. And apparently they had a very expensive electric bill that they were not expecting because um, I had that heater on in my little bathroom <laughs> and cinnamon too, because it was so cold, right? And uh, so that was sort of, you know, that was a little different. And as I start finding all these colors I need for this. But what I do it again when I rent. Um, I don't know, John. I don't know. Uh, again, it was so good because there was nobody there. You know, all the tourist places, there wasn't, it wasn't crowded. Everywhere we went, for instance, like if when um, we went later that summer, we gave Cinnamon, Cinnamon was in charge of the map, and we just, um, we had no itinerary. We just kind of pointed ourselves in the direction looking for poppies, and we spent... Um, a uh, considerable amount of time uh, 
you know, traipsing around looking for, for poppies, and uh, and only stopping. Um, what you know, we'd stop at a hotel and they had room. We never got turned down for a hotel, and you couldn't you couldn't do that now. You know, you just couldn't. Uh, Got to dry this. So John, you're very quiet over there. What's going on? Programming, my dear, programming. Okay. So mm -hmm. when when John says he's programming, tell people what you're doing. What are you doing? I'm working on the new um, store site. So right now we have a a store on, on our website, paintingwithginger.com. You go to the store, gift store, and um, we've got a nifty little store there, don't we? We do have a nifty little store. If I don't have as much control over it as I want, that's why we're gonna. So John is, bring you know, it back my control. trying to um, figure out ways to get the yeah, basically to get the the store. I think I need some clean water, kid. I'm about the end of this, but I'm putting all the bright colors on now. You and don't um, want to muddy them up, my queen. No. Nothing worse than muddy colors on a pretty painting. Oh, look at that. Who had one ready to go? Did you? Yes, ma'am. Nice. Anticipate your needs, my queenness. Nice. Nice, nice. Didn't miss Harvey, did you? No, just ready to keep uh, painting. I don't want any of this blue showing by my path for fear that um, it will translate as a, as a river and not as a path. So anyway, I guess I got to continue on with the story. I get I get kind of distracted too. So uh, after we got back in um, uh, from uh, France that 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 before Christmas, 
And then I had that February, I had that Art Expo um, exhibition at the New York Art Expo. That was the first year I went. And the cinnamon went with me to that. And we did, um, we did several um, after, the, after that, too. Just, I think we went three more years. And the, the first time I went, I went with, through a gallery in um, Las Vegas. And then after that, the, um, uh, a publisher um, saw my work at Art Expo and liked it very much. And, and that's how I got a publishing contract. For, and that's the first publishing contract I got uh, for my artwork was because of uh, have, having gone to France. And I tell you what, if I had stayed with that uh, Cadriana, that never would have happened. Boy, Mary's house had all these trees and grass, and she had a place where you could sit out there and paint. And um, she sort of, for a cinnamon in me, that her house was sort of the quintessential. If I ever had a house in France or in Europe, like I have a lot of friends that go to Italy and do that, and artists that go and they take tours and stuff. But someone says, "Well, why don't you do a?" Um, you know, this has come up. Why don't you do like a thing and uh, like a, a seminar or something and like Cinnamon does up in, in um, uh, New Pennsylvania like we do and, just, and do an art retreat of some kind. And, well, you just can't factor in what the costs are going to be. We don't have time to go set it up. I don't want to chase people's luggage. You've got to have a lot of people involved in something like that. Um, you can't just, it just can't be us. And um, it just is a lot of work for the, you know. Cinnamon always calls it the uh, juice for the squeeze. That's her new thing. Is there enough juice for the squeeze? You know, I, I said, what are you talking about? She says, well, is that, you know, is the return, um, uh, going to offset the, the time it takes to do whatever the project is, okay? And, uh, and so that, I mean, that's just an interesting way to look at stuff, you know. It's, for me, I don't really see the world quite that way, but, um, but, uh, but it's practical. I mean, you, if you figure out what your time is, for instance, like I talk about um, our academy and, you know, our art lessons that we do. Uh, I'm going to dry this before I put on my next colors. Let's see what we're talking about. You know, the the time, you know, you John and I um, find ourselves working uh, pretty much with some sort of project or another, right? Every day, and then just when we could probably take a break, I come up with a new idea. You know, we could do this. What would you think if we did that? And we should have a gnome contest. That'll be fun. And by the way, we should do certificates. And, and John just says, okay, okay. Um, and that's fine, you know, because that's fun and that involves everybody. And, and then, you know, let's not even talk about the, the you know, the puzzle, the puzzle con thing we want to do. 
And um, we want to do all that. We want to have the, the luxury of doing all of that, okay? And we can do that if um, we, stay, we just stay home and do it, right? Yes, that we can. That's our goal. So stay home and do it. Do more stuff, get people involved. This is fun, too. And, I, you know, I like the fact that, you know, that we're doing this. Really, I do. I think it's really neat. I'm going to change total brushes because I've got blue on that, and I don't want that. Let's try this. All right, so that's dry, right? Everybody's with me on that? I just painted our lamp. Hope that light <laughs> just okay. If I'm not in a hurry, and I don't have anywhere to be, and I'm not worried about any kind of schedule. But I'm gonna just do a painting till I like the painting, right? And I get all the little things in it I wanna do. Then um, I will find that I have very good results with painting like this. All the little tweaks. You know, we really do. And a lot of times it's just for me, like if I'm not drawing anything, and then I'm barely just plopping this paint on, just touching it and plopping it on. smaller brush to do any more of that. Red's one of those funny colors, but sometimes it just needs two or three coats before you really get what you're doing. You just really get where you want to go. and then dry it. Ginger, do you make up a reference for these paintings that include all these colors of dips and dabs and other things? Yeah. Pretty much what she paints is identical to the reference. I do. That's the beauty of it. I'm going to dry that and then just um, do a little editing.
one thing that was interesting, when Cinema and I were in France, um, we thought, both times, we thought it would be really nice to be able to try pastels even, because they're very expensive. If you get a good box of pastels, you get a thousand bucks or something. So we found out that they, the town they were made in, all over the world, they sell them from there all over the world. And um, we couldn't find any for sale. Really? Yeah. The, the, we went to an, I, I bought a, um, I did buy a, um, a pastel painting just from somebody, an art gallery. I went in there and bought one because it was real pretty. Yeah, but there so was, um, yeah, no. I know, how crazy is that, right? And um, I, I was shocked, because and then the same thing with, like if you go to Costco, they used to sell the little Limoges boxes, pill boxes that are all hand done. So we went, we went there too. And, um, and we found no boxes. Hmm. We, we wandered all over too. That's back in the days when I used to walk a lot, right? I mean, we wandered everywhere, John, up and down streets looking for these stupid boxes, and nobody had them. They just, you know, what they had wasn't, you know, it was nothing compared to what we, we saw coming, you know, when you're in the States and what we saw, right? So, um, all right, so we're doing. I'm going to go through a lot of white here and, and drying. Okay. So anyway, the um, okay. So now we're gonna. All right, let me try that. Just a little tip when you're using a hair dryer. If um, you've got something and you need it to dry and you're getting it really hot, it may not seem dry. It'll see, seem more tacky because it's sticky. You've got, if you hit it with cold air, you can tell whether or not you dried it. Does it make sense? Yes, it does.
But was that a question to me? No, I just wanted to share that. I think you should. Couldn't help yourself, could you? to get those really bright colors. that white well yeah if you put it over white you for sure it's going to be brighter it just has to be right and then a couple more coats on and, and then you know and then it's got to be brighter than whatever else you were doing Looking for colors here. We talked about Matisse. Matisse has some of the best reds in the world. They, they make some reds that are just too amazing. Right? And um, you can't, you know, you can't, um, uh, but much better than, than you know, they just have more of the red stuff in it. Does that make sense? The stuff that makes it red. Yeah, the stuff that makes it red, they have more of that. And they go up to um, level. Level seven. Yeah, level seven on the reds. And I don't usually put those in, I don't put those in tutorials because, you know, they're $50 or two, but I don't just, you know, I don't do it. That's a lot of buckos. It's a lot of buckos, baby. So I'm kind of, I'm gonna have to throw some of these paints out on there just. Well, that's gonna be during the break. That's when during the break, we're going, now talk about the break a little bit, John. I mean, tell people what we're talking about, the break. What, the break, what is the break? We're, we're, we do nothing publicly between the, uh, Christmas and New Year's. We try to revamp the studio, clean up for another year, get ready for another round. And, and our mods have, you know, they don't do anything on the no, club and, or nothing either, we right? slack off. Some do, some don't. But they have, you know, they have the option of just, you know, doing nothing. You know, well, they have the option of doing nothing now, but, you know, they just, they, <laughs> they may do nothing. Option. They may be more inclined to do nothing. How's that? Because they've got, you know, and that's hard to imagine, but they...
Okay, so just the last little details on this, just sort of fun. You mean you're almost done with it? Yeah, almost, just think 99% done with it. 99%, is there ever a 98, 97? <laughs> no, did, you, did there need to, does need to be? No. There isn't. <laughs> you might get the... Um, get the frame ready? Get the frame ready, because I want to do some I of the final stuff. It, the, well, the frame is... Um, yes, all these paintings will be varnished, probably with gloss. And it'll look stunning. Those colors will just pop. Pop, 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 pop. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah, that's exactly what'll happen. There's so many little tiny things to do. Because you know, once I have an idea of what I want to paint, though, that's it. You know, it's got to be painted that. Come on, wake you up. Oh, and there's a rumor that we'll have a Christmas show with the Art Sherpa and the Queen of Color. More details will follow. Yep. She and I were on the phone chatting today about that. And it's how news the, to me. 
Well, you were in bed. So you don't get. You're not privy to the high, high toxin. Well, no, I great plans, until right? Three, four o'clock in the morning. Well, I'm not cr cr criticizing the sleep. fact that you were in bed. I'm just explaining why you never heard about it. Oh, okay. I certainly wouldn't criticize the fact. I mean, you work harder than anybody I know, Johnny. Certainly wouldn't um, criticize you for for well, being you in can bed. Criticize me all you want. Well, I wouldn't dream of it. I wouldn't dream of it. Always something. Can't go back into that pile of paint anymore because there's stuff all over it. Should have just grabbed another pad. If I was doing this bigger, I could really pop some of these little windows out and stuff. But I'm not, so I didn't. Yes and yes. Try this before I go any further. I love these Artisto pens. Aren't they the greatest? Well, they they're clear. Could, yeah, they... Well, that's an older one. That's an older one. The new ones are clear, yeah. Yeah. So you can see how much ink you got. So when you think there's paint in there, there's really not. You're not shaking it for nothing. Red. You keep asking for luminous red. I don't believe they even make a luminous red. They do. I think you're crazy talk. Didn't we buy some? Well, not if I don't think they make it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I have luminous orange. I got lots of luminous orange. Luminous give me, orange. Give me, where, where's luminous orange? Do I have that? Hand. I have that out. We have luminous red right there. Oh, look at that. So they do make luminous red. But here's luminous orange too, though. 
Okay. It looks like this. What's that one? Uh, it might, might be luminous orange. <laughs> Just, you can't mix the luminous colors together. You can't mix them together. You can't put anybody on top of them. Nope. No, they're just kind of your the last. They're top guys. In the last they little thing. They don't play nice can... with each other or anybody else. Words are the wise. Now, there's absolutely nothing in this one. Let's see. I can go way down here. Here we go. These little sticky things. Did you find that frame? What, what are we looking for? Frame. Well, you were still painting, so no. Well, yeah, maybe so. Okay. I'm telling you, the stick thing works really good. I was saying, because if you, you know, put out, particularly Holbein, if you put out a little bit of their paint, you get like a tablespoon. It goes plop. But you put a little stick in, a little coffee stirrer stick, and that doesn't happen. And, um, Hmm. Uh, we got eight by ten. Mm -hmm. For a scene. Oh, we have the ugly frames again. I think what we got. Wait, eight by ten are the cute ones. Okay. The, the little blue ones. I like the more professional museum ones. You want blue? I think the blue one would look cute with this. All right. Well, if that's what you think, that's what I think. Oh. Okay. You, know, you can just lay these on top. You don't have to press them in. We What's got a that? Different ones. These old barnwood ones too. All right. So I'm going to just move all this out of the way. You think you're done? Well, I don't know that I'm done, John, but I'm moving it out of the way so we can see what the frame looks like, and I'll see what else I need to do. Once it's in the frame, then I will know. Just like I'll have a psychic moment, and, um, you know. Psychic and then moment. I, <laughs> and then I'll know, right? And other than that, <laughs> I wouldn't know what I know, right? What I need to invent is a paint tube that auto close. Well, the thing is, the Liquitec paint caps are so everybody likes them, particularly if you have any kind of arthritis, because they're, they're big. because they're, they're they're big and they're yeah, the teeth are really small and they're hard to get. You know, otherwise, once you start clogging up the paint tube, and at one time I asked, back when uh, Jerry's was I was working, you know, painting it with Jerry's Artorama, and it, th this came up about paint tubes. Um, and uh, they said that they had ordered their paint their caps for their paint tubes for you know like the next hundred years. Put the paint. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, people. Here we go. Show and tell time. We have this one. Ooh. That's nice, but I think it's too, just too, 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 too okay. dark. All right. Shut down on that the, one. The paint leaves do not come with frames. We're just showing you kind of how they look finished. That's what yeah, you're that's, that's the one I was thinking of, and I think that's the kind of one I like. Just I'll just take those things up here, and I'm going to flip them in. There. Oh, yeah, see? And then I know where I want to sign it because the... Um, frame's in the way. I just the grass right over there underneath the tree. Yeah, absolutely. You're and, not uh, doing that yet. Yes, I am. No, I'm gonna. So I want to put it put it back on there. Oh, you want to see what the green one looks like? You got the green one. You got a couple other ones. No. It depends no. on the wall decor. You could get away with that one. You, you could. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait, wait. We have these. What these eight by tens too? Uh, is that upside down? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is how well, we that, bought that, it. That is for... one ugly frame. Oh my gosh! How... You said you wanted a. That's and that's but, what we but, it. But wouldn't 
yeah, the ugly frame, that's why we bought it. What? What? Um, Oh. That's not bad. Yeah. That's actually kind of nice, See? isn't it? I think that kind of actually because uh -huh. it's, it's wider. Here's the trick: if you, that's like four fingers wide. The wider your frame, the more important the painting looks. My three of my fingers. It's four of mine. Uh oh. <laughs> so when you give the measurement. So you just, you just leave that alone. How did this get here? What? Just to just get here? Yes. <laughs> just. And you ask why I don't bring the frames over. <laughs> you ask. Where'd I have that? I don't see it on my arm anywhere. Well, apparently you did. Huh, interesting. Well, give me a paper towel so I can just... Ugh. You know, where's that type of towels? Just take it right off with that. Where'd those go? Here, let's just, let's just take a moment before we finish this. And um, so, you know, the question has come up, how much paint did you guys take to France? How did you bring on? Because I did some large paintings. I took an easel that I assembled over there uh, in pieces, and then we took the canvas in rolls that was cut to size, because if you're gonna stretch a canvas, we took all the stretcher bars and laid them in the suitcases. And then we, um, and then I had the canvas rolled up and my staple gun, okay? You took a staple gun? Yeah, to, so you have to staple the canvas. To, if you want to know how to staple a canvas, I have a really very popular video on YouTube. Did it years ago, like about 15 years ago, on how to staple, um, you know, how to you know stretch a canvas. Because what we did is we took it all, we took the canvases and the stretcher bars, but you buy those separately, and then we, um, uh, uh, did the. Um, um, You know, that's how we painted them, right? You know, then we put them together and painted them. When we went home, we took them apart. Now, here's an interesting side point as side points go, okay? Just sort of a little interesting piece of trivia is that when, the second time that Cinnamon and I went to Europe when we went with my friend Kathy, um, Jill was taking us around with his, you know, Wild Toads ma magic ride there with Kathy, you know, uh, sitting in the back, praying earnestly to not die. She really was, too. She, <laughs> she, she went to Mass anyway. Uh, we had a little church in, our, uh, in the, 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 the town where we rented the first time. Didn't have that, but the last one up on the hill where we rented the second time, there was a little, uh, there was a village church. And um, uh, she, um, she went. And you know, every Sunday, even though she couldn't understand a word they said, but then that was, you know, most, because they were French. And then, but she was sitting there praying. It was really kind of cute. She was sitting there praying in the back seat. She was sure that we were all going to die because of the way Claude uh, drove, which is kind of, I don't know, sort of cute. I don't know, maybe you don't think so, but I thought it was sort of cute, right? And, uh, So, um, let's see, what do I got here? I, I see what's going on here. I just, every once in a while, I'll just, I got it now. It just took me a while to decide what it was I was painting. Did you ever get that? Were you not sure what you're painting? It just, oh. you just look at, you look at something and I do this Mrs. Magoo thing where I'm going, Nikki, you say, Ginger, your style has changed so much over the last year or so. No, I don't have a style, Nikki. I don't have a style. <laughs> That's the whole point. When you can, can paint all the different styles. You know, uh, that there is no style. There's just things that there are certain ways I want to paint. But sometimes this is what you would call, you know, painting very loose. Okay? And uh, now we're just going to. Trim this down here like that. If anybody wants to know, they do not pay us to say this. They don't give us any kind of break, nor do we get a kickback. But if you want to know where we got the frames, we got them from Jerry's Autorama. Uh, anyway, that's where we got them. It's true. 
because uh, I particularly like their frames, but not, not for any particular other than that. There's no absolutely other reason to share that with you than um, that's where we got them. Uh, um, keep forgetting I have the lots of stuff in there. So is that Nikki in England that's making those comments? I believe it is. Hi, Nikki. In England. We saw Nikki. We had the best time with Nikki and her husband in um, in um, the UK. In the UK this in year, the and, and they they met us. It was so nice, and uh, and then uh, we they they had a drive. I don't know a few hours to get to see us, and we all went out to lunch and they touristed around, and that was in Gibraltar. <clears throat> really, was nice, wasn't it, John? Yes, it was. Many yeah. laughs were had. Yeah, we, yeah, we really had a good time, and and we thank you for that because we wouldn't have had such a good time if you hadn't come and uh, shown us around. So I'm gonna last of the little things here, and um, now I'm just gonna kind of look at this and see where my lights and darks are, <clears throat> and if I'm happy with it. Which I think I am, and then I will. Uh, where do you think it should be signed, John? I sit over the grass underneath the tree. Yeah, right in here, right? Yep. That was yeah. my vote. Yeah, I, I think so too. Well, folks, I'd like to thank you again for joining us on the Fly in the Wall episode. And uh, Cinnamon and Yeah, Cinnamon and her stalker. We, one thing about it, we. Uh, she called her husband every day, but I'll guarantee you she didn't mention, I'm pretty sure she didn't mention the stalker to him. <laughs> Just a wild guess. You know, yes? I bet you're right. You know, that's, it's probably not the, not, not the thing to do to mention the stalker. All right, well, this was Mary's house. This really does look so much like her house there in France. I'm going to dry this right here and sign it. Thanks, you guys, for coming. We'll be um, back tomorrow with something else. And We think we'll be back tomorrow. But we may not be, but we could be. <laughs> you never know. We never know. Well, this is true. We don't know. All right. Thanks for coming. Bye. Thanks, everybody. And be sure to subscribe to the channel and share this with others. Yes. Please do. Let people know that we really exist. And tell us, tell us what you think in the comments. I read every one, and your opinion matters, and I really want to know what you guys think. And, um, and I appreciate so much when you, when you comment after the show. Okay? Bye. Bye.